Once again, we are joined on the stage in aid of the 50 year anniversary of the 1972 Premiership winning side. Of course, we've got Big Nick, Jeff Southby, and Adrian Gallagher. Can everyone put their hands together? You don't want to mess with these guys when they've got a roaming microphone. They'll come and find you. So please, shh, shh, shh. All right, of course, 50 years. Adrian, can you believe it's been that long? Oh, no, I've, I've lost my hair, but uh, that's the only thing you can tell. But uh, long, long while, but it goes quick. But uh, it's great to see everyone uh, here and especially uh, the players you played in. What's it like seeing some of those images, not only up on the screen, but then also coming to a function like this and seeing so many, so many familiar faces? Well, just, I, I just caught a bit there running out there. Percy Jones is uh, moving a lot better in that, uh, in that <laughs> film clip. He's uh, sitting over there. And uh, as you know, he, he won the Norm Smith that uh, day. So he's told everyone, hasn't he, John? Time and time again. Yes. Speaking of um, reminding everyone, uh, of course, Big Nick. Well, I will answer to that. <laughs> a coach and a player, talk to us about that crossover there between both of those roles and then, of course, that coaching philosophy that led us to the result of what we're celebrating today. Look, I was probably lucky. In the first flag I played in 68, it meant so much to our great club because we'd been bare for a long time. 70 came along and then 72. Look, today, I said to Gags a couple of minutes ago, he could have had a shave before he came today. <laughs> got, to, got to keep these yes, kids on. Got to keep, keep I'm these sorry. players I'm sorry, under, John. under control. But look, 72 was, firstly, it was fantastic for me. But I can still never forget 68 winning, came back to the old social club and seeing the thousands of our lovely supporters crying, being so happy because it meant so much to us. Now we're on the other end of the cycle. It's coming up again, hopefully quickly. But 72 is, um, look, it's, it's, it's great and sad in some ways, but everyone knows 50 years ago, Jeff was... 21, you were what, 23 or 4 when it about? A bit old, 26. 26, was it? Oh, okay. I was old. It, it slowed down a bit, but 26, <laughs> okay. But look, it was fantastic for the club, and everyone here today, I agree with Luke. I'm so proud we can fill this room again. In the last 14, 15 years, we, we can do it every time. Our 85,000 members. All we need now is, thanks to Bossy and our planning and cooking, we're on the road. We're very close. All we can do is our very, very best, which we did in 72. And luckily, we caught Richmond unawares and we were better than them. But it's, in all my career, I played in six grand finals, won three and lost three. The losing ones are horrible. I, I still remember them. So we have to accept and appreciate and be humble. Luke, we have to be humble when we're successful because we are as great a club as we are. You know, we, we have to treat it as the same way. And I think two or three weeks ago, I suddenly realised more about my boys, I call them, in 72, went down to Yarm to Neil Chandler's funeral. And we've lost three or four of our guys from 72, others. 50 years later, a battling health. So it's just wonderful that the boys that have come today. I see my little indigenous boy there, Cindy Jackson's turned up looking immaculate again. <laughs> I've had two or three boys pull out yesterday and today because of ill health. But that's our stage of life. So to me, 72 was a wonderful year for the club, for me personally. And I'm just so appreciative again. I, I don't have to be told about our loyalty members. 
so many regular faces come year after year, be very generous with their money and buying those beautiful wardrobes and jumpers. So, in short, I'm thrilled to be here with Jeffrey Selfie. It's your turn. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that Nick is a very humble man because his performance on the field and off the field was absolutely special on, for that grand final. Je Jeffrey, you win two best and fairest in 71, 72. I've taken over, sorry. Oh, no, we've done this before, Nick. Uh, uh, <laughs> two best and fairest. There must have been some initiation to the club. Yeah, well... I was lucky enough to play two seasons of uh, senior football prior to uh, coming to uh, the Blues at age 20. So I was playing against big bodies and things like that in those days. And, and of course, we didn't uh, have... The weight program wasn't uh, in play in those days. So fortunately, I escaped that for all my career. But, um, yeah, so uh, to be able to come in and play at the highest level and play very competitive footy was... I was lucky because of that era. I think it's much tougher for these younger blokes coming through the, uh, the junior ranks and, uh, and coming up against bodies that are just incredibly powerful and strong and athletic. So, uh, yeah, it was very special, but I had wonderful mentor mentorship from the likes of Nick and, and Kevin Hall and all of, a lot of the senior players, Gags included, um, uh, providing all that. Percy Jones as well, uh, who played in probably had two premierships by then, so some great mentors that I came into and uh, how lucky I was to play with Blues in a very special era. You talk about uh, Big Nick's humble ship. Just uh, to clarify, explain this moment. So Carlton make eight positional changes to the team, most notably John Nichols put himself in the forward pocket. Please explain. Well, do you want Nick or me to explain that? But, uh, I, well, one of the big moves was Nick... Uh, empowered Percy to play in the ruck basically and Percy did not let him down he played a magnificent game and allowed Nick to uh, well just trawl around the forward line and uh, take the pickings basically and he he did it magnificently along with Jezza who kicked his seven and uh, Walsey who had an unbelievable game kicked six I think and Nick kicking his six goals as well so um, actually, uh, we're, I think we're all in the zone that day. I think. Yeah. Actually, uh, Perth, uh, he'd been in the forward pocket for seven years, hadn't he, John? You know, maturing. <laughs> he was maturing in the pocket there, and uh, and you decide to bring him out. He, he matured very well. Oh well, well, young De Conning, I was just watching. He's been thrown straight in there. You know, Perth took seven years. Well, that's true. But in, in all honesty, I should, I probably should have answered the question. <laughs> Look, after my body was worn out at the time, I was nearly finished and um, we got to a stage where the, the main thing, two or three weeks before, I knew probably we couldn't play Richmond, couldn't beat Richmond the way we'd tried the last ten times over six or seven years. So we had developed a plan where a complete change of attitude and, and, and surprise Probably the, the, one of the greatest thrills I had for semi two, we got thrashed in the second semi final out at Waverley by Richmond. We were, we were poor, they made us look bad. So I knew that we, going into the grand final, if we, when we get there, we, we could beat St Kilda. That we had to do it all differently. And I remember, I'm sure you do too, Sunday morning at training, every player was didn't want to go to training because we were so horrible the day before. And I trusted my players of 72. And I don't know of any coach, and I know David Parkins here today, I don't know of any coach that took the, that risk of telling their players in two weeks' time we're going to have a complete new side. And we're doing it ourselves and we're not going to tell anyone about it. And at the time, I know all of our Committeemen at those years, 72, are either passed on or gone away. A couple of holidays now. But I told our players, whatever you do, don't tell our committee <laughs> what we're doing. Sorry, Luke. Because I didn't trust them. 
no, not in their love of the club. They love the club. But I couldn't trust them not to tell one of their mates over a beer during the next week or two. And every player that went to that training on that Sunday morning, not one of them spoke out of turn. We all kept our secret. And our secret re 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 still resolved in us kicking, was it, 26 goals? Actually, and yeah. Easily. Actually, so I, I owe my players. And those are here today. Thank you. Actually, uh, last year's last year's grand final, Mel Melbourne kicked for the winning score. It was 21 goals. We kicked more than that at half time, because of the attitude you put in the side, and that's without the change of the the centre square and, and so many in the ruck. Well, I know Jones is here today, person. What Gags is probably trying to put a bit of shit on you. I'm not, but <laughs> Jonesy, yes, you spent seven years. But oh, I was only joking, John. No, 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 you weren't. <laughs> I wasn't. The, your, your efforts, starting that day, what you did to, to McKellar and what you did for the team was fantastic and uh, it just showed how good you could be given the chance. And that's, that happens to every first ruckman. No one wants to be a second ruckman. So when you're given the chance and the opportunity to put the effort in and use the ability you've got just so many ruckmen have to become number number one ruckman to show everyone really how good they are. And Jonesy did that and he should be congratulated fantastically. Well done, Peter. Here, here. Now, now, now Jonesy, I'm not going to ask you to stand up because we haven't got five minutes to wait. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to get you back for that one, Big Nick. Sorry, Ash. <laughs> Um, Jeff, of course, you've uh, been instrument, instrumental with the, the spirit of Carlton and, of course, it, it brings us amazing events like this where we get to relive these moments. Talk to us about the importance of, of spirit of Carlton and, of course, uh, not just with our past players but our current players as well. Yeah, look, um, I'm really missing having the, um, the current players, the current team, the Carlton Carlton team. It's been a bit of a tradition now to have... Uh, one Carlton player on separate tables at this function and unfortunately not unable to do it this year. We've also had uh, half and uh, two or three of the AFLW players along as well so we're really missing them and uh, well certainly with Vossi and Cripper and the boys this year they've, um, they've given us a lot of joy and a lot of hope and, uh, and I think we're missing them today and we really wish them all the best in their quest to make the finals this year and, uh, and their ongoing success. So I think um, it's, they've got a great opportunity now to create their own history and uh, I'd love to see that happening. That's why we're all here today. And, uh, and of course we... We did mention um, some players who, who have passed, obviously, uh, recently, and, and Big Nick, you mentioned them by name. Would you like to just, uh, I think you should say a, a few words about those players and, and we can come along memory lane with you. Look, the Carlton Football Club forever has been a family. And there's so many cogs in that family that make it work. We all know that there's no club I know of that's won a flag unless you've had a great committee, a great top down. And through our, our years where we won flags, we've had great leaders ab above us, coaches, CEOs, and as you go down the list, I talk mainly about 72 now, I was lucky, I was an old, older, on the way up player, 33, 34, and I had a great affinity with my players. And unfortunately, you know, in the preceding years, one of, one of, we lost, we've lost three or four, but going way, way back now, we lost John O'Connell in his 40s. Um, it, it's losing those and even Neil Chandler a few weeks ago. And Vinnie Waite was many years ago. But, I mean, but to me, Everyone is equal. I, I love them all. And any coach, 
any leader would, I'm sure you may have your favourites, in, but we were, you can look at our side in semi two, and you can say we had four or five players there that were probably lucky to get a game, but they, they did everything right. They, they earned their position by being a typical Carlton player through, through all of our premierships, but the 81s and 82s, which we'll talk shortly, so many of them had ability, so many of them had less ability, but you win premierships with those players with less ability that give you everything and something extra. That's what they've got to do to, to succeed. Where the ones blessed with everything sort of get it easy. So this is where I'm lucky and I, I'm just so, well look, I'm not going to go back over my 60 odd years with Carlton, but everyone knows I love the club. And 72, which we're celebrating, I love all those boys and I appreciate the ones coming today. And several that can't come, I've had phone calls, the reasons why, we're not going into them. But I meant uh, everyone that could come today are here. And that's why Carlton supporters love every team, every winner, of whatever year it is. So 72, I was lucky. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And complete, please continue that applause. We're going to wrap up now, but uh, a big thank you to these amazing three gentlemen to my right. A big thanks to Jeff, Adrian, and of course, Big Nick. And that, of course, wraps up the 1972 reflection. Now, we are about to head into another short break, but for now, please uh, pause for a moment to reflect those Carlton Premiership players from the 1972 match who are unfortunately no longer with us. Once again, a big thank you to Jeff Southby, John Nichols and Adrian Gallagher. Once again, put your hands together for them for joining us. And we will head to a short break, but once again, we'll be back very soon. <laughs> 